OSPF always takes the rule of least path cost within an OSPF area. We've got some clients on the left and they want to get to this server here. So which path would the traffic take? Would it go via the top router, router 2, or the bottom router, router 3? This depends on something called the cost, and the lower the cost from source to destination wins, and the traffic will go over that direction or pathway. If we add the cost in red of the outgoing interfaces to the diagram, as it's the outgoing interface cost that is used to calculate the cost, or you might call it outbound interface or egress interface, basically the interface that leaves the router, and the path going via R2 is 10, 10, 10, which is a cost of 30, where the path via R3 is 10, 5, 10, which is a cost of 25. So the path via R3 wins, and the traffic will traverse via R3. So with OSPF, the routers take the shortest path, and that's where the name comes from, open shortest path first. And why would the router prefer R3 over R2? Well, this is to do with the speed of the link. We can see between router R1 and R2, it may be a 1 gig link, whereas the link between R1 and R3 is a 10 gig link, so it's half the cost. The cost is reduced based on the link speed. And the reason R1 knew about the costs of these other routers is because they exchange information with each other through link state advertisements within OSPF area, as OSPF is a link state protocol, and from the advertisements, each router builds something called a link state database, which is all of the information about the other routers. And this includes things like the cost of the links and the networks behind the links. And in regards to the cost, the cost is calculated automatically through the use of the auto cost command and you can provide something known as the reference bandwidth. By default OSPF recognises anything more than 100 meg as a cost of 1, but with the latest technology in fibre cabling and interface speeds exceeding 100 gig in today's world, I think possibly exceeding 400 gig if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be an issue as everything above 100 meg will have the same cost when using the auto cost feature. So the reference bandwidth needs to be increased as you don't want a 1 gig per second link and a 40 gig per second link to both have the same cost of 1. As with that, then OSPF is not going to be able to work out which is the faster and the preferred path, so it needs to be adjusted based on the maximum link speed you have in your network. But we can also do this manually, we can configure the costs manually, the costs of the interfaces by using the IP OSPF cost command and then specifying the cost of the interface. And there's a third way of manipulating the cost as well. So you can manipulate the bandwidth of the interface directly, which will change the cost by using the bandwidth command. But you've got to bear in mind, if you use this, it may impact the cost configuration if you've got cost running on the routers as well. Or it can impact anything else, such as monitoring systems that are reliant on the bandwidth being set to their true values rather than being manipulated to change the way OSPF works. It just doesn't feel like best practice as well to change the bandwidth if it's not the true value. So I'd leave the bandwidth alone and stick with the OSPF command or even better stick with the auto cost reference bandwidth command to let it work out the costs within your OSPF area automatically. And to verify the cost of an interface we can run show IP OSPF interface brief command which shows the costs of all of the interfaces or we can also run show IP OSPF interface, followed by the interface name, for example, FA0 slash 1, if we wanted to see the cost of that particular interface itself.